why mega observation theories will have mega failures. First of all, to understand this, this is what the London Eye looks like. It is a beautiful piece of a structure, a beautiful structure that cost about 70 million pounds to build about 23 years ago. And this is what the Evening Standard from the UK has to say about that. It says, the London Eye is officially the capital's biggest ever tourism money spinner, with record profits of more than 29 million last year alone. So within a year, the London Eye was profitable and it made the owner about 25, 29 million pounds. That is a lot of money, no matter how you cut it. And this is where the title of this story gets interesting. Why mega observation ferris will have mega failures. So someone seeing that said, so it means um, ferris wheels, observation wheels are rather profitable. So if that's the case, I need to get in on the action. And uh, that is how the disaster started for the uh, New York ferris wheel. So the developer was Mayer Laufer. So he came to London, he saw the London Eye and thought, well, he worked out the numbers and thought we could do something similar in London, but only this time we make it slightly bigger. So we go to uh, a, a, a ferrous wheel that is 192 meters tall, and that was fine. Now, so he was able to gather a bit of money funding. So he checked with the New York City and to see if they wanted to fund the same thing. And I would imagine that the whole story behind it is that look at the London Eye. It's been running for a few years. Look at how successful it is. We could do something similar here in New York. And he was able to gather about $450 million to start the project. And you're thinking, well, that's a lot of money. When you compare that with what they spent on the London Eye, this should be enough money to build the New York Ferris wheel. But that is not what happened. So part of the money went into the engineering because they needed to make something different, something bigger. And then part of the money also went into buying the land and making sure everything is ready. And also part of it was building the whole structure. But guess what? Um, halfway through, not even halfway through, they basically ran out of money for whatever reason. So they decided that they were going to go to the mayor of uh, New York, Bill de Blasio, and ask him for about 900 million uh, <laughs> uh, more to complete the project and, you know, as a bailout. And then the mayor was like, no, we're not going to spend that much money on this. And because of that, the whole project just went down because they were unable to get anyone else to add pump money into the New York uh, Ferris wheel. And that is how it died. So 450 million down the drain and the, the parts for the wheel that was built, that was being assembled, they had to sell that off to someone else. And that was the end of the story. So it goes to show you that sometimes because something works somewhere doesn't mean you can go bigger and be more profitable if things could actually go wrong and this is what happened with new york wheel uh, so when you think about this you thinking you The lesson you learned from the New York wheel was that the fact that you have money and you're trying to maybe reinvent the wheel, it's probably not a good idea. They would have been probably better just buying the same uh, engineering and the studies that have already been done in the, on the London wheel, just replicate it. It's the same size. You build the same thing. You just say it's a replica and there you go. But it would have been much, much cheaper. But anyway, they decided to go bigger because that is the whole point. Every time there's a new project, everyone wants to outdo the other person. Now, let's go back to a little bit of history. The first Ferris wheel that was built was built in Chicago in 1893, and it cost at the time $385,000. And the designer was 
George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. How interesting. So anyway, that was the origin. And ever since, people have been building these Ferris wheel. You would go to, there are smaller Ferris wheel that were just, you know, for children. And they can be easily dismantled after maybe uh, a couple of weeks in one location. And then the traveling uh, uh, merchants will just uh, go to another city, set up. And then children will come and you know you do that but these are not mega projects these are not big ferris wheel they're just relatively large so that children could have fun and that's it but that is not what most cities want to do what most cities and engineers want to do is to participate in something big something interesting and that is why the guy who thought about uh beating london i actually tried to make it bigger and then it failed and they lost a lot of money and now that is not the only failure the next one was something called the Skyview Las Vegas Super Wheel that was supposed to be built in, well, Las Vegas Strip. And guess what? Uh, $300 million was supposed to be spent and that did not work out. It was just an unfinished giant Ferris wheel that cost uh, a lot of money and, uh, well, it failed. And you're thinking, another one in the United States Las Vegas, well, they have a lot of money. They're used to building massive proje uh, projects and housing hotels uh, on the Las Vegas Strip. How come it did not work? Well, the one thing that most people forget is that London, compared to a lot of other locations, you cannot just go and put a massive Ferris wheel in any location. It just doesn't work. If you want to gamble, you go to, well, you go to Las Vegas. And that is what you do there. Las Vegas has the Las Vegas Strip. Anything outside the Strip is actually not that interesting to see. So most of the interesting things is just in one street. And most people go there for a different feel. So I would imagine that is partly why the Skyview Las Vegas Super Wheel failed. Now, let's move on. This time in China, China has been known to try to compete with the West by building massive structures, you know, big, big, trying to show that Chinese engineering, Chinese infrastructure can compete with the best of them. And that is what they did. Beijing Great Wheel was to have been constructed in Eastern Beijing. And uh, guess what? It was supposed to be part of the 2008 Summer Olympics venue. And uh, they wanted to showcase this because the London Eye itself was also supposed to be part of the millennia. So they started, uh, it was set up in 1999, 2000, you know, and then, you know, the whole thing was supposed to be temporary. And then they decided, well, it's making money. We might as well keep it. Beijing decided to do the same thing. For whatever reason, they were unable to finish building it. And it would have been, they wanted to build something that would have been the world's tallest Ferris wheel at a diameter of 198 meters. That is massive, much larger than the London Eye. And well, they had structural issues, they had problems, and they were unable to complete it before the Olympics. And after the Olympics, what's the point of building something when the Olympics is gone? Who's going to see it? Because the whole point was to for people to admire it during the games, because you have all eyes on Beijing. That did not happen. It just died. Then you move on to Melbourne. <laughs> this is another one. They were trying to build a ferris wheel and it was described by the operators as the southern hemisphere only giant observation wheel they wanted to make it big something big down under so 120 meters tall and uh seven spokes are reflecting the seven pointed stars of the australian flag they had it all down and uh, it opened <laughs> two years before schedule and you're thinking Unlike the New York one that did not open, at least the Australians got their act together. They were able to build it. Uh, but it closed 40 days later. <laughs> that is not good because something that's been hyped up as, you know, the next best thing in Australia, 
after kangaroos and koala and boomerang. Now you have this Ferris wheel. And then 40 days later, they had to close it down. And uh, guess what? It was supposed to be a temporary thing. We were going to fix it. it the damage was so bad that they couldn't fix it. And it was subsequently dismantled for major repairs. And everyone's been waiting ever since for it to come back. And then uh, COVID came. And with COVID, when they say stay at home, everyone stayed at home. So who's going to ride and pay for the Ferris wheel? Nobody. And that also uh, made the problem worse. And finally, it was permanently closed. And everyone was going, what went wrong? Well, for structural defects. And that's it. That's what they said. And that was bad. But let's go to the Middle East, because this discussion will not be complete without talking about the Ain Dubai or the Dubai Eye. And someone said, oh, they missed an opportunity. Instead of calling it the Ain Dubai, they should have just said Dubai, D-U-B space E-Y-E, like the London Eye. So you play on word dub I. Anyway. That's not what they went for, but they wanted to make this just massive. And this is what they wanted to achieve because they, the Arab states, uh, well, not really all Arab states, but you know, the Emirates, uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, Qatar, all these Arab states, uh, Saudi Arabia have been trying to compete with each other. For example, Qatar got the world cup and, uh, Every, they, everyone was actually waiting, speculating, is it going to work? Is there going to be backlash? And the World Cup was a success, especially the, um, the uh, final of the World Cup, France and Argentina, was probably one of the best World Cup finals ever. And the atmosphere was great. Okay, we're not going to talk about the labor and how the whole thing was built because that's a different conversation. But you get it. It was successful that now Saudi Arabia says we want to host it as well. You get the idea. Everyone's trying to outdo each other. Now, back to Ferris wheel. Dubai said we're, we're going to build the largest in the world. And that is exactly what they did. Now it means Dubai is competing in the world stage. They can compete with London. They can say, look, it, London is good, but this is much bigger. Basically, you see, it's like you have a small car and then uh, you build, you have a double decker bus. That is how big in comparison it is to the London Eye. It was massive. Now, what happened? First of all, you could put 1,750 passengers in 48 cabins, the capsules where people enter. It was just that big. And they spent a whopping $1.6 billion on this. $1.6 billion. The London Eye only cost, now you could actually say the London Eye only cost £70 million. Pounds. That is like almost 1 billion more than the London Eye. That is how Dubai does it. Go home or go big or go home. Anyway, so now you have 1,750 passengers that could fit into the, in Dubai and compare that to London Eye. How much can you, can you fit in there? And this is going, actually going to show you why the Dubai project actually failed. So the London Eye has 32 pods capsules and it can fit about 25 people in each so that is if everyone every all the capsules are filled you could get about 800 people in total and that is pretty impressive but when you compare that to the in dubai well it is almost double the more than double the amount of people it can carry now this brings us to the problem when you have more people and you have a bigger structure with a massive diameter it means you need to build something stronger to be able to hold that many people and then you are in a desert where it is hot 
And what can go wrong? Well, a lot of things can go wrong. And one of those is that the more it rotates, wear and tear, it's much heavier. The bearings are going to have to support more weight. You have the heat, you have everything going against it. And that is exactly what happened. And they stopped and they said, we're going to fix some structural issues. And then it was postponed again and again and again. And till 2023, everyone's still waiting. And now it is just a massive monument standing there on the edge of the city, no one riding it. And you have $1.6 billion going to waste down the drain. So is it ever even going to come back? Who? And this is what Alec Davis, the director of postgraduate uh, teaching in Cardiff University engineering program has to say. He said, the problem with building the world's largest anything is that when you extend beyond a certain scale, you enter the unknown, where issues that are normally minor can become suddenly major. But there is no information on what is wrong with the in Dubai. But everyone just assumes it's a structural thing, which means safety is involved and you cannot just put over a thousand people on a ferris wheel with structural issues. If it gets uh, stuck or people die, it just becomes a massive liability. And it says, but there is no information on this. So who knows? It could be material issues. It could be surprise additional stress on the bearing from wind or structural movement beyond what it was intended to manage. So, the London Eye is on around 35 meters. If you want to break the record as having the biggest or the largest Ferris wheel in the world, all you just need to do is just build uh, something at 140. You only have five <laughs> meters more and that's it, you're done. So you can mitigate the risk of actually wasting your investment.